Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good night, not good night. Uh, welcome to your greatest YouTuber going to be, um, yeah, uh, come on, or um, as you know that we are doing our IPv4 series, as you know, hopefully, yeah. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, you can still subscribe it. Thank you so much. And um, um, people who have subscribed to me, uh, uh, um, thank you so much for doing that and uh, sharing my videos. And let's crack on with IPv4 subnetting then. Um, sorry, uh, it's, it's a bit of a different phone from which I usually use. So it is going to be a bit of a mission today. Because as I don't know how to set it up properly at the moment. So um, let's crack on with it. And um, so IPv4 subnetting. And as you all know, IPv4 subnetting is um, maybe in the coming five or 10 years, it's going to be a bye-bye technology, but it's always good to have a base of it. So my suggestion will always be, I'll do some videos on them as well, that when you do IPv4, try to do IPv6 as well. IPv6 is the way forward at the moment as people and the technologist and the uh, IT experts and whole of the world says at the moment. So yeah. So the other thing I wanted to discuss was today. I think it was a better idea because we were talking about site annotation in the previous videos before. So just for the exam, what we'll do is I'm going to practice some of the prefix or the slash notation. So when I say Prefix or slash notation is this one. So we usually call it prefix or slash notation. So whenever I am talking about IPv4, hello you there, hello you there, uh, just a little bit, oh yeah, um, or I'm back again. Uh, so whenever we are talking about um, IPv4, it is about 32-bit addressing. So when I talk about IPv6, it's a completely different addressing scheme. So we will talk about it later. So supposedly you are in a CCNA exam or you are sitting in your home and you're watching networking videos and there's different IP addresses that are coming. And at the end of every IP address, there's a slash or a prefix notation. So supposedly, how would that be? So there's going to be a slash it. So I'll just make it more easier. Let's do class A. So when I say class A, so this will be included in class A, these prefix notations. 11. So in your exam, you have to solve it in a really fast mode and realizing first which category does it go into. Uh, IPv6, um, IPv6. <laughs> IPv6 hasn't got any classes, so uh, good for us, but it has got a lot of uh, addressing and addresses, so that's bad for us. And not really, we have to learn it, so yeah. IPv4 subnetting has got classes, so this is class A. Class A will go till, let's see. All right, so here, that's a class A. Class A will cover all these prefixes. So now if someone says to us that what is the subnet mask referring to slash eight? What is the subnet mask referring to slash eight? So let's find it. So it's gonna be 255, 0.0.0. .0 .0. How? So I'll briefly explain it to you if you see this somewhere. So that's your 8 bits here under and that's your first octet. So then these have no values after that. So that's going to be that one. So similarly, just watch the pattern. So if you don't understand it, keep on watching it again and again. Watch the pattern in class A, side annotations. So these are CIDR notation. Uh, 
uh, sorry about my writing. It's um, it's not really a family problem though. But I think yeah, um, I'm improving my writing. So sorry if someone looks at them and says, "Oh, what a bad writing." Uh, sorry about that. I'm improving though. Right. So, right. Let's back come back to the topic. So slash nine. Slash nine is here. So there were eight bits here. Correct. Right. Because it's a 32 mask, so because it is a 32 mask, so that's the first octet, which is 8 bits. Then this has to be 8 bits, 8 bits, 8 bits. So this is how it works. So that's first octet, second, third, and fourth octet. And right, so when I do slash 9, which means it's going to be, this is going to be our subnet mask here. And that's a class A1 as well. So supposedly, the 8 is here, and plus 1, 9. So 8 plus 1 is 9, so that's a slash 9 mask. Let's go to the next one. I'm explaining this because some of the times the books haven't explained it in a way where you can connect to it, because there's too much given inside the books and too many information is there. So now it's 10 now. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for the second value. This was the first value, 128. So second value is always remember, ladies and gentlemen, 192. So 8 plus 2, just for an example. That's the second value here. That's 192. That's, so that's your slash 10 or prefix 10. So we are actually, what we are doing is, we are taking out the subnet mask, which is referring to this specific slash notation. If you see it in the exam, this is how you solve it. Remember, it has to be done in one minute or seconds, or it'd be even better if you can do it in 10 or 12 seconds. That will save you time. This will all come with practice. So now let's go next to slash 11. So slash 11, as you all know, 8 plus 3 is 11, so that's going to be 2, 2, 4. 8 plus 3. So the third value is always going to be 2, 2, 4. And now we are into slash 12. 255, 240.0.0. It's very important because when you're doing IPv4 addressing, if you have these values in mind, it will really speed up the process. So now 8. That's the fourth value. So remember, this is a pattern. First value is 128 because it's a slash 9. So 8 plus 1. Here we had nothing here because it's slash 8. So the values of these bits, there were no bits here. It was extremely and completely empty here. Now when the bits have started coming in, so that's the first value is always going to be. So that was that's the ninth bit, remember. 128 and that's the tenth bit. So 8 plus 2, tenth bit. 8 plus 3, that's the eleventh bit, 224. And then this is the fourth bit. Remember, this is a pattern which is carrying on. Everyone do not lose hope because when hope is lost, nothing is left. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. That was my own quotation. Maybe. Did I copy it from someone? No. Right, so yeah. So slash 13 similarly. So now we have to look after the fifth value. Anyone knows? Okay, that's a 248. 248, so there we go. 8 plus. So first value, 128. Always, always remember whether it's a class B or a class C or a class A. It always got to be going in the same pattern. First value, 128. Octets can change. But remember, because it's class A, so we'll be working in this octet, the second one. Remember that. So 128 is first value, second value, third value, fourth value, and fifth value. And now, second thing you need to know is that's the ninth bit, that's the tenth bit here, nine, and that's the tenth bit, eight plus two, ten. You can keep on adding them as well. 8 plus 5. 8 plus 3 is 11. That's the 11th bit here. That's 11th bit as a whole. But it has, it's the third bit and the third value in the second octet. Remember. So this is a sequence which is happening. So here we go. That's 13. 8 plus 5. 
it add 5 is what? what? 13, yeah. So the, that's the 13 bit here. And the value inside the octet is, it's the fifth value, so 48. Right, let's go to the next one. 252.0.0. So that's the 14th bit, so 8 plus 6. Here we go. So that's the 14th bit. So this is what is happening. So remember, this is for class A. I will repeat class B in the next one, but that's the sequence how it carries on. So class A will start from here, the sequence of the values. So for class B, the sequence will start from here. Class C, the sequence will start from here, remember. So six value, 252. Now we have 15. Similarly, 255. So just look at the subnet masks, how they are changing as well. So that's a 254.0.0. And so 8 plus 7 is 15, or 8 add 7 is 15. So remember this, that's the seventh value, always, that's a 254. But as a whole, it's the 15th notation, slash 15 notation, it's the 15th bit, 8 plus 7, 15 bit as a whole. Now remember this, um, I might be over experimenting or telling you something. Some people or a lot of people might argue on this one. Um, I would probably go with their argument as well that this might be a class B mask. But it's coming in this sequence at the moment. So it is a class B mask. But again, 8 plus 8 is what? 16. So that's the 8th bit here in the octet, but it's the 16th bit as a whole. So that's a slash 16 prefix. So if you add the bits together, whatever is coming is your slashes. So slash 8, 8 here, slash 9. Just a recap, 8 plus 1 is 9. That's the slash 9. And then just carry on with the sequence. 8 add 2 is 10. So that's slash 10. 8 add 3 is 11. That's slash 11. 8 add 4 is 12. So that's slash 12, slash 13. Similarly, carries on with this one. If you can't understand it, it's completely fine. Just carry on revising it. It will really help you moving forward in the IPv4 sequence. And we'll do class B and class C. I'm just trying to make your bases a bit more stronger so that when I've gone a bit more serious, I think. No, really. Uh, right, I'm back again. Um, this is class A. So you can practice class B. Anyone who is new to networking, new to IPv4 subnetting, this is boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, people from all over the world, anywhere, in Greenland, in Antarctica, in England, in Pakistan, in China, anywhere. This is the sequence of IPv4 subnetting you need to learn to be more quick in it. It's not about passing that, that cheesy exam of CCNA. I mean, it can be N+. Plus. Once you're in the field, someone has given you a job somewhere, you're looking at the network diagrams, you know what's happening. What sort of subnet mask has been used? What IP address has been used? So these are all subnet mask and side annotations. Remember, these are not IP addresses. I repeat, 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 your honor. These are not IP addresses. These are subnet masks, ladies and gentlemen. So, right. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, sorry, the video has gone a bit longer. And you can carry on practicing this. So once you are done with class A, I'll do class B. Uh, other thing is, um, I do take a lot of time to make the video so that you can practice it. You can practice it and move forward. The whole aim of this learning is to become a nice and a steady professional network support consultant or anywhere you are apart from that if you are into passing your a plus n plus um, uh, from comtia or ccna from cisco you're most more than welcome or if you feel that um, you don't need them and you can do through proper professional organizations uh, and 
normal um, colleges and schools that do N plus and that will polish your skills to move you into IT and you can do these certifications later. Remember, remember, certifications will be a vital part so you can't ignore them. At the moment, what you can do is learn this stuff and then you can always, when you feel confident that you are there, then you can go on the certification. I mean, that is what my way is. Your way might be quite different. Like a lot of people would try to give their exam for certification. I don't blame them. They can try, but there's a chance they might miss that part and the money, of course, the finances. It depends if they have a lot of finances. Uh, they can still go and uh, by all means, my suggestion would be if you if you are well off and you have finances you should always go and sit for the exam to see what sort of questions are coming and other thing i think ccna has included is cable issues uh, a lot of stuff and i think cabling troubleshooting and then you have um, ip uh, i think uh, automation yeah ip automation automation has been included as well there's a lot of new topics if you see my previous videos uh, a lot of things have been included, including um, OSPF version 3 and a lot of other stuff. So, uh, yeah, if you carry on just focusing on IPv4 at the moment, which is a little part of CCNA, but it's a really big part of the network field. So my suggestion would be do this. If you have spare time, my other suggestion would be because you're going to be doing IPv6 learning, do hex conversions as well hexadecimal to binary conversions binary to hex conversions and hexadecimal conversions to binary conversions will be a very vital part thank you so much for listening to my hoo-ha lectures hoo-ha no oh uh, yeah uh, i mean uh, my learning and your learning lectures and i'll see you in my next video and um for that time be safe be happy and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.